Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be doing a beginner's tutorial. So this is for people who want to get into making hair in Blender or just working with hair particles and they've never touched it. Maybe you've done some modeling, some basic stuff in Blender, but you haven't done anything with hair particles. In that case, this tutorial will be for you because we're going to take it very simple. I'm going to pretend you don't really know anything about hair particles. Take it one step at a time and then you will have a result like this as well. We're going to be making this sort of hairball and we're going to be adding some clumping to it, a bit of roughness and giving it some cool dynamic with hair combing and stuff like that. So if you want to learn how to do this as a beginner, um, let's jump into the tutorial. I will be using Blender 4.2 to make some nice hair. So yeah, let's jump in. Okay, so we're going to keep this super, super simple. We're going to start by just opening up a default scene in Blender 4.2 and we'll select the default objects. And for now, we're just going to press delete on our keyboard. And we're going to go Shift A, and that brings up our Add options here. We're going to go to the Mesh, and let's just add in a UV Sphere. Now, you could add in any object you want. That's completely fine. I'm just going to go with UV Sphere for this particular tutorial. So let's also right-click and just give it Shade Smooth. There we go. And let's now go over to our Particles. And this is where we're going to add our hair. So if you click here on the plus with this mesh selected. By default, it's gonna give you an emitter particle system. So if you hit the space bar, you'll have these particles come out. And they're very interesting in their own right, and I'll cover them sometime. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working with hair. And hair in its own way is kind of particles as well. It's a particle distribution. Um, it's something we won't get into at the moment, but the hair here is what we wanna enable. We wanna click on advanced. And um, if you are working with a character or a model that has um, any sort of modifier applied to it, so for example, if you had a subdivision surface modifier, for example, if I quickly grab it here, um, and you had that in front of the particle system, and then you added the particles here, you can just go here to the source and make sure use modifier stack is enabled. And now it'll kind of consider all of that um, stuff that's going on with the subdivision surface modifier. Now, in this case, you won't notice that much, but if you had, for example, like a displacement modifier and the surface was being displaced by a modifier, you'd want to make sure that when you add that particle system, you use under the source, you say, use modifier stack, okay? So as a beginner, that's something to keep in mind because you might run into a situation like that and your hair is kind of floating off to the side and you don't know why and you get frustrated. So hopefully that is a little troubleshooting thing you can consider consider as a beginner if you run into that. So let's now look at some of the basics here. So at the very top, it's quite simple. You have something here called your mission. And the number here is just a number of not hairs so much, but these are what we call parent particles. So essentially each one of these parent particles will represent a certain number of assigned children particles. We'll get that to, the, to that in a second. But for now, this number, we're going to take down to 500. And that doesn't mean we're going to have 500 hairs. It means we're going to have 500 particles that each generate, um, parent particles that each generate a certain set amount of children hair strands. Okay, and that might be confusing, but let's wait till we get further on and you'll kind of see. So for now, let's just also take the hair length. Let's just take it way down. So I'm going to go with something, you know, like half a meter should be fine. And now let's quickly go down to the bit I was telling you about. If we go down to children, you're going to see here at the moment it's set to none, but if we go here to interpolate it, now for each one of these 500 um, number of particles we have here, if we have under the children a generated amount. So when we render this, for each one of those 500, there's going to be 100 hair particles. So in other words, we'd have 5,000 hairs. At the moment in the viewport here, you can see we only have 1,000 because, or, or 500, because for all of that 500 parent particles, in the viewport here, the, the display amount, is set to 10. So if we take this to two, you can see all of a sudden we have only a thousand hairs showing here because of each one of those 500 parents, each one of them only has two children. So for the viewport display, we'll just leave it at 10. That's more than enough to give us an idea of what we're working with. And for the render amount, um, we'll just take that to 150. So we get more than 5,000 hairs, okay? So for now, let's make this hair actually look interesting. Um, so let's go to um, under here in the children. This is where uh, stuff gets really fun. Um, at the moment, these hairs are all just kind of straight and we want them to clump. So we're gonna go over to clumping. As the name says, it's very straightforward. And you can kind of grab this value here and make it clump, but that doesn't give you a lot of control. Now you can see they're kind of clumping together in the ends um, per parent particle. But what we can do is leave this value at zero and Blender has something here called the use clump curve. So we're gonna click on that. 
So now we can come here and drag the slider. So if we grab this one on the end, you can see towards the end and it becomes more pointy. And this one here is the root of the parent um, the, of the hair. So we can kind of grab these two and then we can click in between to add another point. And then that gives us a lot more control here. So we can kind of shape the hair however we want. So I might bring this one down here, this one like so. And you can make all sorts of cool shapes with your hair, giving you a lot more control. But at the moment, you'll notice that this hair looks very jaggedy. And that's because we have to go to our viewport display and tell Blender to use more strand steps over here. So that'll give you more lag if you were like doing an animation. But um, because we're just doing a static render here, we can kind of bump that up quite high and we'll have a nice looking result. However, that's just a viewport display. If you wanna have a nice render as well, we need to go to render, enable B spline here, and you can bump this up to maybe a value of four. Because we're working with short hair here, three or four should be fine. So let's go back down to our children. Under the clump, um, cl clump here, let's just adjust it now. I'm gonna go maybe with something like that, looks really cool. And at the moment, it's just looking too straight. So to add a little bit of roughness, we're gonna to go to the drop down below and we're gonna add some roughness. So let's start by taking the end point here, giving a little bit of a value. And let's go to the random here as well. Now you can see it looks a little bit more frizzled. And under the uniform here, we can also just change that slightly. And you can also mess around with the size here to randomize some of that a little bit. So I might give it a little tiny bit of that. If you want to go for really curly hair, you could do that by dragging that way down. But Blender gives you a lot of control in this way. So I'm gonna just go over a smaller value. Just gonna make it look a bit like matted fur, but not too matted. So now what we're gonna do is to make this look more interesting, we're gonna go over to object and change it to particle edit. And now you can only see the parent particles. If you press N on your keyboard, you can go over here to tool and then go over to options and enable over here. Uh, I think under viewport display, just enable children. So now we can come over here to our tools on the side and click on the comb. You can press F to grow your brush. So I'm gonna press F to grow it. And then we can just come here and just comb. And you can see that the particles are kind of sticking into the sphere. But if you come here to this distance here and you bump it up, they'll kind of stick away more from the sphere. So you can keep bumping it up. And now you can see they don't embed themselves as much. So I'm gonna just kind of paint it down. Then I'm gonna to go to the right orthographic view and paint it down as well. And you can kind of shape it. So now I'm gonna shape it a little bit, just kind of puffing it out. You can do whatever you want with this. But I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple like so. And now our hair has a little bit more of a dynamic look to it. Okay, so let's go back into object mode and let's go into our front view. Let's go shift A and add in a camera. And we're gonna go G, Y and move that camera back. Just place it over here and then press zero to go into camera view. Okay, so now we have our camera looking at our hairball here. And let's go to our render settings. Change the renders engine to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you enable it and use it. So I'm gonna go with that. And then under our render options here, we're gonna to go to the max samples. And let's make that 60 or maybe 70 in this case. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can now also go shift A and add in a light, add in an area light. I wanna go G and move it over to the side and then go R to rotate it. Then I'm gonna to go to my light properties, give it a strength of 300. And then go to the size here and make it three meters. And then in the front view, I'll just move it over to the side. And then in your top view, you can go shift D to duplicate. Have it kind of coming from the side and in the front. So we have kind of three lights three point lighting system. And then we're gonna go shift D to duplicate the light, move it behind here, rotate it, and then just have one coming from behind, give that a strength of 1,200, and then make the size much bigger. So now if we go to our camera view, we'll have this nice rim lighting kind of coming from the back. And then you can go shift A, you can go to your mesh options, add in a plane. For now, I'm just gonna go out of the rendered mode, back into solid, and you can go RX90 and hit enter. Then go S to scale your plane, and then S, X to scale it along the X. And I'm just gonna move this back in the view. And in the camera view, I might just scale that plane just so it fills the background of the camera. And then with that selected, that plane, we can go to our properties. Uh, for the material, click new, and let's call this BG for background. Let's go to the base color here and make it darker. And now if we press Z and go rendered, 
You can see we have a background here. So now let's select our furball. Let's give that a new material. And let's come here to the base color and click on it. And let's change it to a noise texture. And already this is kind of looking cool, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over into our shading workspace. Go into our camera view over here. And in our shading workspace now we've just selected We've got our noise texture here. Let's move it up and let's go shift a search and get a color ramp. Place it over here and let's go Z and go rendered. And for now, let's go to our particles and just turn it off in the viewport. And let's drag this black value up and this white value down like so and bring them close together. And then we're just going to come here to the scale and make it two. And then let's grab the black value here and let's make that a blue color or a purplish kind of color like so. There we go. And let's grab this white value and let's make that a bluish kind of color like so. As you can see. And now let's go and turn back on our particle system. And now you can see the hair is using the same thing because if we go over to our particles and you go to render, you can actually see here by default it's using that material. You could add any material you want and then go to the slot and add it. So the sphere and the hair don't have to have the same material, but in this case they do by default. At the moment, the hairs are quite thick. So under our particles, we can also go over to the hair shape and over here, make the root diameter 0.5. And now I think what we can do is maybe just grab one of these lights here. I'll just take the strength down to maybe 150. So it's not too intense. Okay, that's looking good. So now let's go ahead and go render and render image and give this a test render. By the way, just before you click render, if you did add a subdivision surface modifier, keep in mind that maybe the viewport, the viewport here might be actually set to one, right? But your render is set to two. So as soon as it renders, it's actually be looking at it like this. So if you took the viewport display and took it to two, you can see this is what's happening here. So one of two things can happen. You can either go to your particles and just go and turn off use modifier stack in this instance. I wouldn't recommend that. Just go to your modifiers and make sure that just like the viewport level is set to one, that the render here is also set to one and then you won't get that issue when you render. Otherwise everything will kind of shoot off to the side like that because the particle, the mesh position becomes different and the particles can be arranged the same ways. Um, just something to keep in mind. Um, if you're a beginner, that could be very frustrating when it happens and you don't understand why. And there we have some fur that we've made in Blender. Now, given that this is quite stylized, um, you can go ahead and make something more realistic by using a more realistic color palette. But I think this is a fun beginner's introduction to making something with hair in Blender. So hopefully if this has been your absolute first time touching hair particles in Blender, I really hope you have enjoyed my tutorial. And definitely give a like, a subscription even, and check out some of my other content. It really will be worth subscribing because I make a lot of cool stuff like this that um, can help you as a beginner. And I even cover much more advanced topics on my Patreon, on my um, Skillshare page as well. You can check all that in the description. So I'll say goodbye for now and thank you for watching.